Many people consider vaccines to be one of the greatest achievements of mankind and consider it to be responsible for the global eradication of smallpox and the control of many diseases such as polio, measles, and tetanus throughout the world. However, many people beg to differ with this view and tend to worry regarding the safety and efficacy of vaccines. This has led to the controversial problem, vaccine hesitancy, and its associated myths. Recently, in 2019, the World Health Organization designated vaccine hesitancy as one of the top 10 threats to global health. According to the World Health Organization, vaccine hesitancy is the reluctance or refusal to vaccinate despite the availability of vaccines which threaten to reverse progress made to tackling vaccine-preventable diseases. Whereas some researchers believe this problem is more complex than a typical binary behavioral outcome and define it to be a continuum of vaccine beliefs and associated behavior, ranging from complete refusal of all vaccines to complete vaccine acceptance. The scope of the problem is so big that in 2018, the World Health Organization reported that about 82,596 cases of measles in Europe, which is three times the number of people infected with measles for 2017. This increase in the number of infected was considered to be a direct result of the drop in vaccination seen in Europe in the previous years. But with the tensions running high and both sides more polarized than ever, it becomes essential to clear the air around some of the myths associated with vaccination. The following will be an enactment of a podcast performed by the McMaster University students to highlight the myths around vaccination while showing the arguments proposed by both sides of the spectrum. Hello, this is your host, Greta, and welcome to the first broadcast of the People's Court. Today, we will try and have an open and unbiased discussion on the important issue of vaccine hesitancy. And I have with me our in-house expert, Dr. Barry, who's an advocate of vaccines and will be facing the questions of concerned citizens. Hello, doctor, and welcome to the show. Thanks for inviting me, Greta, and a pleasure to be here. So let's begin our show with our lined up callers. May I have the first caller, please? Hello, and may I please know who this is? Hello, Matt. This is Mason, and I'm the father of two children and have some concerns regarding vaccines. Welcome to the show. And Mason, what is your question for Dr. Barry? My question is regarding vaccines causing autism. My suspicion regarding this originates from a study that I read online. The study was published in the Landsat by a British surgeon named Andrew Wakefield. The study showed that the MMR vaccine was causing autism in children that were monitored during the study. Also, the authors reported that the parents associated the loss of acquired skills, like language in children, with the MMR vaccination. Since I read this study, I have been very concerned regarding the health of my children and would like to ask how Dr. Berry advocates vaccines with so many dangers associated. I can understand your concern, Mason. But a key thing for you to consider is that the study you named was firstly published in 1998, which is more than 20 years old. Moreover, numerous other studies have been since published which show that there is no link between autism and vaccines. Additionally, organizations like the Canadian Pediatric Society and the CDC have also come to the same conclusion that no such link exists. Also. The surgeon you named in the study, Andrew Wakefield, has been discredited since the study was published and is believed to be guilty of scientific misconduct. This study was even retracted by Lancet. So, I can say this link between vaccines and autism has not been scientifically proven yet. I see. Thanks for clearing my doubts, doctor. Thanks for calling, Mason. May I have the next caller? Hi, may I know who's calling and what is your question that you have for the doctor? Hello, this is Michael, and I would like to ask the expert regarding the need for vaccination. So basically, why would I or my children need to be vaccinated if the disease that the vaccine prevents has none to very low infection rates? Wouldn't I still be safe without having to risk taking vaccines due to herd immunity? This is a very interesting question, Michael. Now, it might be true that infections that a vaccine prevents is next to none. But if a lot of people choose to not vaccinate themselves, then that would be a problem. The disease infection rates are low because currently a lot of people are vaccinated and thus the disease is not spreading. 
Also, you mentioned the concept of herd immunity. Herd immunity basically describes how people are protected from a disease following vaccination by halting the germ responsible for the infection being transmitted between people. In this way, even people who cannot be vaccinated for other medical reasons can also be protected. But in order for herd immunity to work, approximately 90 to 95 percent of the entire population needs to be vaccinated for a disease like measles. So, if people choose not to be vaccinated, then that would cause the disease to spread again. Therefore, it is more beneficial for your children to be vaccinated. Thanks for calling, Michael. Hopefully we were able to clear up some of your doubts. May I have the last call of the day, please? Hello, this is Raphael, and my questions relate to the use of unsafe toxins in vaccines. So I did some research and I found an article that shocked me, that vaccines are using things like formaldehyde or mercury in them. Aren't these substances dangerous for an individual's health? Now that is a very good question, Raphael. Vaccines do indeed have these substances you mentioned, but there are only minimal traces of these substances. Basically, you mentioned using mercury which is added as thimerosal in vaccines. But according to the CDC, there is no evidence that small amounts of thimerosal in flu vaccines cause any harm, except for minor reactions like redness and swelling in the injection site. And manufacturers have also stopped using thimerosal. So I can ensure that our health organizations like Health Canada and the CDC are doing their job efficiently and wouldn't have allowed such vaccines to be out in the market if they had a slight chance of being harmful to humans. I hope that clarified your doubts. And doctor, it was a pleasure talking to you, and I'm glad that we were able to clarify some doubts that people might have regarding vaccination. Thanks for having me, Greta, and allowing me to demystify these myths regarding vaccines. Thanks for all those who tuned into our show today. This is your host, Greta, and we'll hopefully see you back with another episode of People's Court.